Hello and welcome to Bloodborne, The Old Hunters Part 5. So today, before we head over to the boss, um, we're going to be... I think I missed something here in the fishing hamlet. Um, this pathway right here. So we'll take care of this. Um, I we did get that underground cell key from Simon, if you guys remember the hunter that I accidentally killed, uh, next to the lighthouse lantern. So we got that key, so I'll be returning to research hall, and hopefully unlocking the remaining doors in the underground cells, and then we'll go back to where we were, the underneath the well in the fishing hamlet. Trying to get that boss. Okay, so King Cold Blood. Is that it? From the sound of it, it's probably going to be another hunter coming for my ass, but. Just want to make sure we didn't miss any items. Beast Hide Guard. Scope this out real quick. So we've already killed, this is the third hunter we've killed that's come for us uh, in this form. And this is the third piece of armor we're getting from him. The Beast Hide Guard. The bloodied hide of a horrible cleric beast pulled over the back. Without the attached beast hide, this foreign guard wouldn't raise anyone's eyebrows. Brador donned a compatriot's beastly scalp and hide while still moist with blood. Most of the blood stains on this hide were from that day. Blood stains, sorry, on this hide were from that day. Huh. Creepy. But he's wearing the cleric beast. That's pretty raw, man. Oh, I thought that was a freaking super tall monster. <laughs> okay, so. That's done. I'm not really going to clear this area out again, so I will see you guys in Research Hall. We are at Research Hall. Um, one other thing is, my friend who already beat the game told me that I'm. S get out of here. Um, apparently, this. You remember the saint lady in here? Where we gave her brain fluid and she gives us like healing items? Oh god. Apparently we're supposed to help her one more, one last time. Is that her? Oh, she's just a head now? Oh, that's gross. <laughs> oh, hello. One last time. Will you fetch brain fluid just one last time? Murky, mushy fluid that will make me whole. The sticky sound whispers to me. So very close, right into my ear. My head, just a head, that's all there is. I need my baptism. Please, I beg of you. I want to be something. <laughs> Creepy. You're right there, lass. Are you quite done there? Please, the sticky spot. <laughs> so we're supposed to kill her? Because if you remember, these heads revive. So we get the brain fluid. <laughs> Please. Give me brain fluid. And then we feed her her own the brain fluid, sound, which is pretty fucking twisted, but you know. Baptism. Ah. Or perhaps I'm already brimming over. Ah. 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 
Are you sucking uh, through a straw? <laughs> uh, I see a shape. My guide, I see your voice, clearly as it bends and bleeds. Ah. My own revelation, just for me. We thank you for everything, really. I used to be nothing. <laughs> Oh shit. I think she legit died this time. Yeah. She did. So she gave us a rune. That's pretty cool. Milkweed rune. Milkweed. A carol rune envisioned by Adeline, patient of the research hall. A transcription of the inhuman sticky whispers that reveal the nature of a celestial attendant. Those who take this oath become a lumen wood that peers towards the sky, feeding phantasms in its luscious bed. Phantasms guide us and lead to further discoveries. Interesting. Huh. Alright, well. I think that is it for research hall. We have 100% completed it. Uh... So let us... Hmm. Supposed to go down here, I think. Yeah. Let's go unlock those doors. Free the prisoners! Free them all! I guess, uh, <laughs> that hunter that was taunting us about the bell ringing, if you remember the first time he ran through here, that's probably the guy that keeps summoning his ghost and challenge, like, trying to kill us as we ran through the, um, fishing hamlet. I think the grandpa and the other monsters are, oh, they're actually dead now. These guys used to always revive. I think they're there. Oh, there he goes. Not a chance, son. Sit down. Braidor's testimony. I think there's a headpiece. Yeah. The scalp of a horrible cleric beast, indicating that Hunter Braidor, a healing church assassin, oh shit, had killed a compatriot. Afterward, he wore his ally's own scalp and hid himself away, deep below it in his cell. The church provided him with a single soundless spell of death to ensure their secrets would be kept. Soundless spell of death. Huh. I guess that's why when we first came to him, we couldn't hear the bell sound. But now that we're like slowly learning the church's secrets, he's coming for us and we kept hearing it. Interesting. Um, he's a, a he's an assassin of the healing church too. That's pretty interesting. So, um, I know I accidentally killed Simon. Like I said, the hunter in the fishing hamlet's lighthouse that we accidentally killed. But I checked out his dialogue, and um, the guy that gave us the bow blade. Let me actually look that up real quick. So yeah, Simon's bow blade. No. Oh. Maybe you have to go into the inventory. Oh. Oh, there we go. Uh, choice weapon of Simon, one of the first healing church hunters. Simon despised firearms, and so the church workshop had this specially fashioned to his liking. The large, curved blade serves as a bow when transformed. But aside from a few close friends, Simon was scoffed at for his choice of arms. Who would, For who would dare face the beasts with a measly bow? Yeah, I mean, it's still a blade, you know. I mean, it is pretty weak, but... <laughs> I think that's because I didn't... I didn't build a blood, tin, blood tinge 
build. Uh, I went skill build, as you can see, I have 55 in skill and only 12 in blood tinge. And this scales well with skill and blood tinge, so um, if I ever do run through this again, I'll try to do blood tinge and skill build. That sounds pretty fun. Um, but yeah, this guy was saying that, you know, um, uh, Fludge, what was the other guy's name? Hold on. Braidor? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this guy. Braidor, uh, the assassin, was coming for him, and he was trying to kill Simon, because Simon was finding out more secrets. And he told us that the main secret is there at the fishing hamlet. The whole conspiracy of, you know, as we went through this DLC, everyone kept telling us, oh, there's like secrets, if you really want to find out secrets, keep going. So the main secret is in the fishing hamlet, so we'll go ahead and check that out. But he, Simon, the bow blade master, was telling us um, that we should reveal it, I think. <laughs> and that, you know, even though their father sinned, like, why should we bear the weight of that, the brunt of that, the consequences? But anyways, I think everything is unlocked at this point, except for that, the bell hunter, Braidor, I guess. We already killed this guy. Oh, he's gone. He gave us that, uh, the Japanese set, which actually I don't think I read. So before we head into Braidor Cell, let me just read that real quick. Uh, Yamamura. Oh, yeah. A standard hunter's hat worn by Yamamura the Wanderer. This hat and staff were given to him when he became a hunter and confederate of the League. We are also part of the League, actually. Uh, the Kakihaori, garb of a distant eastern land, worn by Yamamura the Wanderer. This eastern warrior pursued a beast for honorable revenge, then became a hunter of the League. But when he stared straight into impurity, it drove him mad. So I like all these little tidbits of lore. How interesting would it be if once uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is released, <laughs> turns out like they talk about Yamamura or something. That'd be pretty crazy. Um, Alright, so that's that. Let's go ahead and head down here. Well, there he is. Look who's here. Welcome to my quarters. I've never entertained a guest before. Are you going to kill me? After all you've done, kill me. As if to right your wrongs. <laughs> Sounded like Mark Hamill's The Joker's Laugh. <laughs> uh, is that it? What is it? Aren't you going to kill me? Or perhaps beg my forgiveness? Beg your forgiveness? Excuse me? <laughs> well, leave off. What's done is done. <laughs> Sounds so much like Mark Hamill. What is it? Oh, well. Okay, I guess that's the only text there is. Yeah, I'm going to kill you. You killed Simon. Nothing changes. Such is the nature of man. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I thought I was going to have another, like... <laughs> thought I was going to have another, like, mini boss fight. I didn't think he was going to die like that. But, okay. Oh, the blood letter. Okay, cool. So he drops this item. Excellent. The blood letter is a super sick weapon in the DLC. I probably won't use it because it's a heavy blood tinge build. Yeah, it needs 16 in blood tinge. But um, my friend is using this. <laughs> Loves it. The Demented Hunter weapon brandished by Braidor, the healing church assassin. The blood letter assumes its true and terrifying form after it draws upon blood from the inner reaches of one's body and soul. This is the only effective means of expelling tainted blood, or so Braidor, isolated in his cell, continue to believe. <laughs> Interesting. 
It looks pretty crazy, though. I remember, yeah, once he stabbed himself and uh, we were fighting him in the fishing hamlet, that shit hurt, like, a lot. It was only when I started being preemptive that we would defeat him with ease. But, uh, okay, I guess that's it. There's nothing else in this room, it looks like. Let me take one quick scope through the hall. And if there's nothing else, then we will start making our way back to the fishing hamlet. Right, where we went down that way. And I know I didn't kill those two giant shark monsters in the well, so we'll have to take care of those guys too. Uh, because apparently... Oh, that's Gratia. Uh, my other friend, she told me that the weapon I want is there. One of those fuckers holds the Rakuyo. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and head back, and then we will see about... Um, we'll see about those two shark monsters, and then after that I'll head straight into the boss fight. Alright, so these two assholes... Apparently, if we just use our monocula, stab this fool from a distance. Oh, got him. Didn't do too much damage. How did that miss? Tell me. Show me your pretty face. Whoa! That was a jump attack. Never really used to that. Ow. So much ridiculous damage. Ah, uh, how did that miss? Growing frustrations. Oh. All right, big boy. Calm yourself. What? He clipped me. <laughs> Growing frustrations. I'm just gonna try to wail on this guy now. Oh no, ah, I knew that was coming. I was <laughs> pushing my dodge button, but it did not go off, which sucks. And I'm rolling towards the guy. Okay, my. Oh, I'm stuck against his leg. Wow, but he's not attacking me because of that. That is so funny. Look at this. I'll keep you safe, my child. Hush now. <laughs> Mama has you. Fuck off of me, boy. <laughs> Let me out of here. You ain't my dad. Oh no, you know what it is? This is a glitch. Oh, that is... 
unfortunate. It's a glitch. I can't move my joystick <laughs> in any direction. No, why would you do this to me? The item's right there. Okay, you know what we're gonna have to do? Oh my gosh, look it. I'm just rolling in that way. Okay, we're gonna have to let's try to reawaken. See if that fixes it. Oh man, if these guys respawn. I mean if I reawaken they should respawn, so that's That sucks. <laughs> well, we'll have to see, I guess. Oh, please. Stay dead. Man, I got all excited, too. Like, damn. <laughs> Thought he was protecting me. Uh, okay, I only have one sedative left, I think. It's freaking... Mine hunters and their stupid frenzy ability. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna let the frenzy hit me. Kinda don't wanna burn through all my sedatives. This one hit me too. Oh, they respawned. Fuck a luck a ding dong, man. That that blows. <laughs> all right. Fuck these bastards. We'll have to do this all over again. Should I just try to take them on again, or what's the best best method here? It's kind of disappointing, to say the least. So, hmm. I mean, we can do it again. I just. I mean, actually, the one on the ceiling is like nothing. It's just this guy that we didn't really worry about. Ah! Ah! Missing everything. I don't think we'll make it this round. I just had to jump in here. Okay, the second one's down. No, I got caught in between their legs. That's, that's not fair. Oh, it's not starting to stagger. Oh, okay, we actually got him. I'll just have to be careful for this guy. Oh, Alright, that went better than expected. <laughs> Baby, the Rakuyo. Uh, this is the blade I wanted. I'm gonna have to use our last blood rock on this baby. So the Chikage is the what, the katana that I'm maining, and here's the lore. 
foreign-made weapon wielded by the royal guards who protected Annalise, queen of the vile bloods at Canehurst Castle. When the intricate rippled engraving that spans the Chicago's blade is imbrued with blood, uh, the sword sings in scarlet hues. However, the right eats away away at the wielder's very essence. So, um, that's the second form. If you use the trick form, it goes into a, a blood tinge form and it does more damage, but it depends on how much blood tinge you have. And then mine's low, so I don't usually use the second form. But the thing I wanted to mention is the whole um, C Castle Canehurst and the Vile Bloods and all that is like one of the, my favorite parts of Bloodborne. <laughs> so uh, it's really cool that this was like wielded by the guards, but then real quick we'll swap over to this. And the lore for the Raquillo is this was obviously weighted by you know Lady Maria, if you guys remember my boss fight with her. Hunter weapon wielded by Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower. A trick sword originated in the same co country as the Canehurst Chicago. Only this sword feeds not off blood, but instead demands great dexterity. Lady Maria was fond of this aspect of the Rakuyo, and she frowned upon blood blades, despite being a distant relative of the queen. But one day, she abandoned her beloved Rakuyo, casting it into a dark well, when she could stomach its presence no longer. Huh, that's funny, she still had it when I fought her, and she fucking almost she wrecked us with it. Um... But yeah, that's cool. So we get a free Rakuyo, because I think after you kill Lady Maria, you have a option to purchase it for like shit ton of blood echoes or something in the fountain at home. But uh, yeah, I think it was really cool how Lady Maria is actually a distant relative of uh, Queen Annalise. And it makes sense since they both have white hair. But I just thought that tidbit was really cool. So. Let me check out the stats again. So it has a C scaling and skill, and it at least requires 20, which is great. I think this will actually be a really good weapon once we max it out. So, um, that is that. So, I guess we'll just go back to base for now. And, um,. Here's what I'll do. I'll go back to base. I'm gonna upgrade the Rakuyo as much as I can, and then I'll come back down here and we will face the Orphan of Kos, which is the next boss. I think there's only two bosses in the DLC left: uh, Orphan of Kos and Lawrence. So let's go ahead and burn a Bold Hunter's Mark, and I will see you guys back here, I guess, in a moment. Alright, lads. It's time to face the Orphan of Kos. Now, I've heard this is the hardest boss in Bloodborne, so I'm kind of nervous. But we'll have to see how we do. Any further ado, let's get to it. creepy. Okay. Um. We've 
already fought a child? A child of Kos, or no, as a daughter of Ibriatus? And I think they're all part of like the same great, great ones. in summer. in his second form but I learned a lot from that fight so should be able to nab him in the next fight or two he's pretty cool actually I'm just gonna, gonna have to be careful cuz my Chikage's durability is pretty low so it's probably gonna break soon but yeah I think I I really like this boss like I thought I wouldn't really like him at first because his reveal was kinda gross but he's actually pretty cool like very unique alright let me see so I'm a little soft spoken because it's like the dead of night don't wanna wake anyone up durability. I have to win in this fight. I guess I could use my Moonlight Sword. I want to use something fast.
interesting boss though, I gotta say. The cost parasite. Let's check that out real quick. Oh, it's a weapon. When the carcass of Kos welshed up on the coast, its insides were teeming with tiny parasites, unlike any found in humans. This atypical weapon can only be clasped tight and swung, but a Kos parasite is said to stimulate phantasms, inhabiting a lumen wood. Interesting. Guess you need a certain amount of... Uh, 20 in arcane, okay. Um, that was interesting. Extremely cool boss, I would say. I think it was really interesting how it came out of this great one. Let's go ahead and inspect it. Oh, this thing's like a humanoid. I mean, that's expected, I guess, from the great ones. The orphan came out of there. Fish like body. Interesting. What's that? This is some um, aliens shit, dude. <laughs> it's coming out of somewhere. Essence of a lost, of an ancient one. Great one, whatever. It looks like an oyster or something. Uh, he was really fast though. That boss was super cool, especially the second form when it turns into like the Aizen Hokoku kind of beast. Dude, if they gave it like laser beams, that'd have been fucking sick. <laughs> but not bad, not bad at all. Um, you just have to be quick on your feet with that one. I think the Lady Maria boss fight really kind of uh, trained us for this fight, because Lady Maria was super so fast that kind of prepped me for this. Um, okay, so... Damn. I think we are pretty much done with the DLC, which was pretty quick, I know. <laughs> uh, I think that's all that's left is Lawrence. My friend told me where to find him. Actually, you saw him already in like the first video when we went to the Holy Church and uh, right when we entered the Hunter's Nightmare. There is a beast on an altar inside of the church. That is actually Lawrence. So we have to go back there. Um, but yeah, design-wise, I think that was like actually one of the top, like maybe one of my favorites. Those wings were so cool. Like if you kind of ignore the fact that he looks like an old man. <laughs> like if they made his face look like a... More like something from Alien or something. That would have been fucking crazy. Like all smooth or something with teeth. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and return. Um, in fact, I think we'll just stop this video here. Because um, I'll just have like a boss on each video, I guess. So yeah, that was the Orphan of Kos. And the last and final video, which should only be like... I don't know, five minutes. I guess it depends on how long the boss fight will run for and if how many times I'll die. Um, the typical amount seems to be for the DLC about two times. Once to kind of figure out their attack patterns and then the second to kill them. But um, yeah, I'm going to aim for two. If I can get one, that'll be fantastic. But since it's the last boss, I'm expecting at least two. Most likely three, maybe even four. I heard he's pretty tough. Has a lot of fire damage. Um, but yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching part 5. I guess that was the Orphan of Kos. And all the other little tidbits that we um, needed to do to wrap up the DLC. Uh, and I will see you guys for the 6th and final part of the Old Hunters. Peace.